Hey folks, this one we create in this tutorial is using some of the new 3.2 features such as the duplicate elements node and the long weighted return of named attributes. As with any procedural setup, you get a ton of variety by changing these sort of parameters around. And I'll be showing you how to get some color values in to the Geometry Nodes network that are then fed into the shader. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Start out by adding a cube and a new Geometry Nodes network. First node you want there is the grid. And you want to bump up the size 4x4 four four and 60x60 60 60 vertices. I'm just going to turn the wireframe on so you can see what's happening. So I want to merge these together just so we're getting some more random variety in the geometry. So by putting that distance on point 0.2 so that's merging the ones within that distance together and you get mostly triangles. So now I want to split these, split edges. It doesn't visibly do anything, but it has actually separated all the faces. Then you can use scalar elements to scale down those individual faces. Put that on 0.8. Then I want to start stacking these up. So you want the new duplicate elements node. By default it is on point. Change that to face and put it on 60. So that's basically making 60 copies of each of those faces. And you can't see the difference because they're all lying on top of each other. That's where you need to add in the set position. And I want access just to that Z component. They need to add the combine XYZ, put that into the offset. Now I've got a socket there for the Z. So what I can do is actually put the duplicate index straight into Z. And you're getting a ton of them there, 60 copies going all the way up. Of course, the distance is way too much. So by using a, a math node as a multiplier, put that on 0.1. I'm just going to turn off wireframe, turn off outline. And in the cavity, just put that on world and valley all the way up. Now I can see a bit of definition between the faces. So essentially you've got 60 copies at 0.1 distance between them. So because that amount is a field socket, you can see the diamond, it means you can put a different value into each one of those triangles so we can get them stacked at different heights. So you can either use randomize, or in this case, I'm just going to use the noise texture. Put a factor in there. You get nothing there because that noise texture is less than one. So we're not getting any stacks. So if you map that range, zero to one, 
0 to 60. So for each one of the triangles there, or each one of the faces, we're getting a random amount based on that noise. I'm just going to put that down to 1. And just to get some more definition there, most of these texture nodes actually emit a value between 0.3 and 0.8. So if you do match that, get a bit more definition. So 0 0.3, 0 0.8, getting more contrast in the noise. Then you want to use a scene time. The frame is going to go into the W. So I'll put that in 4D mode. That will be way too fast, so we need to just slow that down. Math node. Multiply by 0.01. Okay, so now I want to get some thickness to these. So I'm just going to use an extrude node. Extrude mesh. By default, it's going at 1. Because these were 0.1 between them, I want something less than that, so 0.08 that works pretty well. There is actually no underside, but you're not going to know that unless you're looking at a certain angle. Okay, so now it's going to start putting some colour into this. Open up the shader editor. Change that to GeoNodes. Just going to put the default material on. You won't see anything there. Because this won't apply it to the network. You've got to use a node for that. Set material. Put the material in there. I'm just going to put the AO on. 3 and 3. And some screen space reflections. Just to check that that did apply the material. So I want to get some colour values from the geometry nodes into that shader. And this is where the new named attributes come in handy. Store named attribute. This is new in 3.2. Put that on face. Keep it on float. And just type in color. That's not a built-in attribute. So you actually could call that anything you want. And just to check that that's going to work. If you add the attribute node up in the shader editor, the factor into the base color and match that name. As you can see, now you've got a direct link from the geometry nodes to the shader graph. So I can just use another texture to drive this value. Just going to use the Veronoi, put the distance in, and scale down to 2. A little bit hard to see that, so same thing I did here. You want to map the range. So map range, once again 0.3 to 0.8 as the value is coming in and we want to remap to 0 to 1. And so that gives you more definition there. So I might actually put that down a little bit lower. 0.5 on the scale. Okay, 
just make it clear what's going on there. If I mute out those final nodes, you can see it's applying the color to those original faces. And that duplication is just continuing that same color up. What happens if you want to put some variation to that color? Well, you can do that is to reuse that store named attribute. Put that on face. You see colors are in your list. And this will override the previous one which ordinarily would seem a little bit useless, but what I'm wanting to do is take the original color and randomize it as it goes up. So if you use another new node, see the companion node to this, named attribute, it lets you get access of these attributes that have been created. So if I put that into the value, not getting any difference to what we had earlier in the graph. But the advantage of this is now I can add a random value to this. So I say add and then feed in another noise You can start to see what it's doing there. Once again, to get more control of that, just do the 0.3 to 0.8. And this is controlling how much is being added. So you see, if I have that down to zero, Getting nothing added, and as I put that up, just a subtle thing, and you're still getting the same basic color in that region, but some variation as you go. Put the scale on one, and just adds a little bit of variety to those stacks. And finally, I want to put some actual color onto that. So you put that through a color ramp. And I should point out, you could actually put the color down here, but I tend to prefer to do it on the shader itself. And then just make that an orange to a pink. And you can see if you came back here, it's just kind of essentially bleeding a little bit more of the other colors into those stacks. Depending on how you set this up, probably was better with something a little bit higher in the scale. So I'll put that on two. Okay, so that's the final result. We can get many more variations out of that. So that's the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching.